This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. I'd like to call the Tuesday, January 17th, 2023, special meeting of the North Haven Board of Education to order at 6 p.m. Tonight's meeting will be a second workshop to review and discuss the superintendent's 23-24 budget proposal. At this time, Mr. Sturk will continue the presentation of the 23-24 superintendent's budget recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Bathrick. Right. Good evening, board members. Once again, we're here to dive into the following departments tonight. Uh, North Haven Middle School, Elementary Schools, and Athletics. And just to recap from uh, last meeting, the uh, requested increase is 2.87%, which reflects a $1,727,624,000 increase. Um, just a real quick note before we get into it um, on the capital plan that was presented last week there was a line item for chairs at Clintonville that's no longer needed chairs were located and Clintonville is has its fill of chairs at this time so uh, so we can begin with any questions or discussion around North Haven Middle School uh, Miss Bankowski is here this evening with Ms. Wilcox to uh, support the discussion and answer any questions that may arise. Just any questions or discussion? Go ahead. Good to hear with you. Um, hi. <coughs> Thank you for coming tonight. Um, so, at we learned from the last budget workshop that at the elementary school, there's some additional like behavioral interventions that are happening post-pandemic. Are you seeing those as well at the middle school level? How are the kids adjusting to being like relatively normal post-pandemic and are we seeing an increase in behavioral issues? Um, I think we definitely are. I, for me, it's a little bit, I haven't lived at middle school really pre-pandemic, so I don't know if we're getting back to some normal behaviors or if it is post-pandemic behaviors. Um, we're very fortunate to be able to utilize our counselors in a lot of ways. They're doing some push-in classroom lessons to kind of work on some skills, both career-wise and behaviorally. Um, we utilize our SRBI team and the general teams at the middle school where we can have those conversations. And the nice thing about the team is teachers see them in all different areas. So they can have some conversations about why someone might be successful in one room versus another and set up plans or anything like that if we need to. Wonderful. And so your budget request for the 23-24 school year is adequate to support continued um, behavioral interventions and you're very comfortable with everything? I am. Okay, great. If, if there was unlimited money, which there's not, um, is there anything else on your list that would be like a nice to have and not a need to have. So I think our coordinators work really hard to get the materials we need. I think there's probably always more, some materials that you can put in kids' hands, either literature or manipulatives. I think they do a really good job of selecting what we need for our kids to be successful. Um, but I'm sure everyone always has like a little bit of a wish list. And are we seeing a return to, and I know that this is, like you maybe, maybe don't have a good baseline for pre-pandemic, but are we seeing a return to participation in extracurricular activities, clubs and sports and things of that nature? We are. Yeah. Um, I, I think, and Steve can talk about this, our teams are at capacity, you know, the tryouts, kids are showing up, they're participating, clubs are running, CLP is running. We have tons of kids, I think, just coming back even for the social aspect. Our attendance at middle school basketball games is crazy. The kids, they go home and they come back and they enjoy cheering on their friends. And I think doing all those things that you would expect middle schoolers to be able to do. In the fall, a lot of them were attending, coming back and attending the football games. Uh, and I think just even though that's the high school teams, it's still part of being the community. So I think we're seeing kids participate in that kind of stuff. And I know that, you know, my, my middle schooler, 
loves Gamers Club. Mr. Sansolo does like a really good job with that. And I know that they're at capacity often. Is there any thought being given to expanding some of these um, extracurriculars? Yeah, so we talk with kids about uh, sometimes they have different things they want to run. And really, as long as there's adults willing to do them, we're happy to run them. We have had more opportunity for late bus, which I think has helped even switch some of the days things are running because we were having, where if everything ran on the same day, kids really had to pick. So having more use of the late bus during the week has helped that because now some kids will stay for a club on Wednesday, but maybe stay for Quinnipiac tutoring on Tuesday or Thursday. So that has been a nice added bonus. Yeah, I'm glad that we have the four day a week late bus option. And I'm wondering, are we seeing that bus pretty full right now? Do you know? Um, I, it would not be as full as like the end of a day run, but okay. we do have kids utilizing it. One of the nice things is not with, when it's not completely full, it doesn't take as long because it does go through the whole town. Yeah. So if you really were maxed out, it might be a long way home, but we definitely have families taking advantage of it. Great. Thanks. Does anybody else have a question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. On to the next. Okay. Uh, moving on to elementary schools as a whole, or unless you want to talk about them individually, it's really up to the board. I would like to do individual. Say. Okay. Is there a certain school you'd like to start with? Nope. Okay. So we can go alphabetically. Um, which brings us to country. Any thoughts, questions around country? Hi. <laughs> um, excited to have you at Clintonville as a Clintonville family ourselves. Thank um, happy to be here. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of ask about, I'm glad that the chair situation has been fixed yes. uh, with, with Clintonville. I'm just wondering if there's any, and I know you're brand new to Clintonville, so no pressure, but are, are there any other items like chairs that we need at Clintonville, like the basics, you know? That was one that was brought to her attention that we rectified really quickly, so other than that, I haven't heard of anything as far as, you know, the basics that, that teachers need. And I want to just ask about behavioral interventions again, too, because I think that's something that's top of mind for like a lot of parents right now, especially parents of kids who are a little scoochy, like mine. Um, he's great. We love him, but he's he's got a lot of energy. Um, so are you are you okay on you know paraprofessionals for special ed? Um, are you okay on behavioral oh, analysts. analysts? I keep wanting to call them behavioral therapists, sorry. Behavioral analysts, etc. Yes, we have BCDs consulting with us. We have paraprofessional support. We have worked really hard thanks to Jen and the team. You know, we've worked really closely together putting plans in place. And so right now we definitely have everything that we need. And are you comfortable from a class size perspective? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody, I think it's what? Uh, kindergarten through second, we try to keep under 20, is that right? So kindergarten really 18, 18 to start right. the year. Um, one, two in the 20s, and then we go up from there. Okay. Um, and I just want to say, like, the staff at Clintonville are so wonderful and so amazing, and we've had such a positive experience with them, so if I can just take a, a quick second to just say, like, I personally love your staff. Love that. Thank you. They are wonderful people. They sure are. Does anybody else have a question? So I, do, I have a question. We're um, each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a finance and numbers person, but um, so for example, there's a other custodial maintenance trades. There's uh, there's a zero for 2023, 2024. Does that mean that that position was unfilled? Or it's going to be not, it's not going to be filled for the next budget year? I'm what just trying to get an understanding. The stipends, we're seeing that. So, the stipends are removed. Okay. So, there's other clerical, so it's 1120. It's. Uh, yeah, what's the. Right here. What's the, the last four digits? 1120. The last four digits. Overtime, two thousand dollars. Was item two forty one oh five two oh three? Is it? It's the OTPT personnel, the two employees. Is that those the are one? moving? Those are so those okay. are being moved out of. They don't. They cover the whole district, right? Okay. So part of it is that seventy one thousand four hundred forty dollars, right? So that was moved to be an entire district. So it goes to a sixteen, which is a different number. It's not going to be located in 03, which is Clintonville. 
Okay, so, so the it's person still, is still there. Just two people where? are still there, and the positions are still there. They're okay. just not. They're district wide. They're okay, so they're paid out of another. Yeah, it's again, it's one of those things where I'm trying to make things look correctly. It's, okay. They're not for okay. just Clintonville. They're for the entire district. Okay, okay. Just wanted to make sure it looked like there was a yeah, personnel that was being moved out. That's yeah, what yeah, there's no, yeah, okay. there's no personnel being moved out. As a matter of okay. fact, the teacher line, which went down by sixty-two thousand dollars, also that's just from retirements and then new teachers being hired at lower grades. So okay. there's a lot of a lot of that went on in Clintonville too. So we're seeing that. Um, I, I, I just actually did a full analysis, right? Because the entire reduction is seventy-two thousand dollars that went down year over year there, and the, but the bulk of that is that seventy-one thousand being moved out to be district wide no longer at Clinton. Okay, all right, thank you. Was there a reason why those OTPT positions were in the O3 or the three object code? Okay, I think it was because of, I think I know the answer to this. Um, I think that they used to code it alphabetically, and Clintonville came up first because um, they used to. This pre how but I, I kind of had remembered that at some point that sometimes they would sh staff that was shared was put in different schools just to house them somewhere. So, anybody else? Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Oh, go ahead, Dice. No, just um, I think when we did the walkthrough, and Marty and I did the walkthrough, there was that need for a refrigerator in the cafeteria at Clinton. Yeah. Did that already get done? Was in the cafeteria, okay. that's part of the equipment that we're, we're purchasing. Uh, okay. Uh, that's, yeah. that, that's part of that equipment that's being purchased. Got it. Don't, the, the large walk-in refrigerator has not been replaced yet. Okay. But we're having, they're, they're supposed to be pricing that out currently at this point. Okay. What? You've all approved, approved the money, approved approved the money yeah. for it. Okay. I just haven't, mm -hmm. they, the, uh, yes, Sal Rizzo, <coughs> is, um, Salvatore Rizzo, who's the head of Charles, is bringing it. We're bringing in two and three different, because we have to get two and three bids. Tom policy, and we have to get three people in to give us a bid on what that's going to cost. So 60, it's about sixty to sixty-five thousand okay. dollars. But you've already approved those funds, and yep. it will be replaced. Got it. Okay. Thank you for yep. clarity. Anybody else? I have a question. Sure. Um, and this would kind of be like kind of for everybody. Are there like certain like must-haves that have been put in here, or is it just kind of in generalities? You know what I mean? Like, is there one thing like that in the budget that's like a must-have for? The school. Does that make sense? What I'm saying. For classrooms. Yeah, for classrooms, teaching aids. You know, whatever the students would need in the classroom. Like, are there any big ticket items or? Well, for classroom teachers, you know, we go through the coordinator, so I don't know if that's what you're asking for. So. I talked to Jody, met with Tracy, and Paris, and kind of determined what they would need instructionally in order to um, you know, move forward with the curriculum in the classrooms. And so all of that is included in all of this. So okay. all the teachers will have you know, what they need for, for curriculum and instruction. Okay. Perfect. Anybody else? I have one question. Uh, I know Mr. Stirk addressed it in the last meeting, but because you're all lucky enough to be here today, I thought I would ask myself about room and how adequate the school size is for what you're doing. And do you see a need or are we adequate or are we uh, in abundance, which I'm sure we are not, but I'll leave it as an option for you. I will say at Clintonville specifically, we have a lot of extra space. We're fortunate enough to have um, some open classrooms even with what we have currently. And so um, our interventionists, our uh, instructional coaches, our EL staff all have their own spaces as well. So we, we do not have a problem with space at Clintonville. Okay, so as the enrollment increases over the next couple of two, three years, do you think you're pretty well squared away the way you are right now? Absolutely. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Anybody else? Not to Clintonville specific, but just because it was raised here, that OTPT line, that got moved from a bunch of, like more than one elementary school, right? It didn't no. it get moved out of Green Acres? I'd as well, to, I'd have to look at that. I don't know. Okay, that. but there was only OT. There was, we only have two OTPT, and those that's look that was that line. So, uh, the, no, there should have been more than that. There should be one other one somewhere else, because it's seventy-one is one salary. There's another salary somewhere else too that got moved out. Okay, so there's an OTPT based at Green Acres. For <coughs> so there's an OT that OT. is district wide that could be from Green Acres, okay. and there's yeah. a PT is an is an I'd have to, I'd consultant. Have to, yeah, I'd have to. I mean, they would be trying to. 
Right, Green Acres. So I do have um, a question, and I should have sent this ahead of time because this is not fair to put you on the spot like this, but the, the distribution of the Wonder books during Craniofacial Awareness Month was just an amazing idea. And I wanted to say thank you for doing that. That's awesome. Um, was there a significant cost associated with that effort, and how was it funded? So uh, first of all, those books was actually funded through our PTA. Um, so we did not come out of um, the school budget. Um, and then we have I can get that figure for you. I don't have a specific figure available at this time. Um, but the total purchase of all those titles was actually funded through the PTA. I have had like a half dozen parents just talk about what an amazing experience that was for their kids, how engaged they were throughout that process. So well done. And uh, it didn't cost us anything. Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very supportive PTA. Board, so we're quite Thank you to them, too. Yeah. That was all I had. Anybody else? I know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, from being a Green Acres parent, it seems like that school is pretty much at capacity, right? I mean, it's there. We are big. Um, as of today, we are 438 students. Um, we do have the room to meet that, uh, that need right now. Um, our our pre-K is uh, a good thing for us because it means job security, but uh, it's booming. Um, and as Superintendent Stark alluded to, we did start our kindergarten numbers where they needed to be at the end of the year, but um, we just enrolled another kindergartner today, so we are getting up there. Um, we have the space we need right now. I think we would have to just kind of be mindful of the fact that if we continue to see this type of growth, that it might be prompt further conversation. Um, but we have the space we need right now. It would be difficult for me to answer if this is just a bubble or if this is the trend to continue. Okay, how much was your enrollment again? Sorry. Uh, as of today, we are in pre-K 438 students. It's gone up three since our last meeting. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, Patrick, I don't know if this is a better question for you. In terms of space issues, so, for example, what the principal was talking about, uh, projecting space needs, you know, some schools may get at a capacity before others. Mm -hmm. What typically is the process? So, for example, um, parent is trying to enroll their kid and the classes are at capacity. What's the option for that specific uh, parent usually? And then another uh, question is, are we looking at you know, trends within certain schools in terms of enrollment? And then trying to figure out, okay, what would be the backup plan if, let's say, it's, you know, it's a good number of students who may not be able to make it uh, into a specific elementary school, what's the ultimate plan? So to answer your second question first, uh, yes, we're looking at that. And we're trying to determine, as Christian said, whether it's a bubble, whether it's a fluke, or whether it's a trend. Um, but I mean, we firmly believe if you live in the neighborhood, in the Green Acres neighborhood, you should be at that school. So we will open other classrooms until we can't open other classrooms. And then it involves a bigger conversation looking to the future. Because the last thing we want to do is have to react and have board come together and decide if redistribute something along those lines. Um, we're trying to be proactive and, and look to the future here and see what those numbers look like so we can have a good discussion when needed if we can't fit you know, 500 students at Green Acres if, yeah. if the enrollment gets to that level. And Howard and I um, talked a few weeks ago, we did subscribe to an enrollment proje projection uh, service, so we're going to start getting those numbers very soon to help us uh, guide those decisions and help us come to the board uh, with, some, with some planning. And those, the projection platform most software we're talking about, that looks at uh, specifically the area that, for example, North Haven, or does it look at the state and kind of gives you a Roman trend within the state or within your area? So I think it does all of that, and we're okay. still waiting on it like that. We just subscribed to it within okay. a few weeks ago, so um, we're still waiting on some of the details and see how they look. Um, okay. I did recently visit Cheshire regarding their um, school modernization program, and he showed me some of the uh, information they received, and it's similar to, to what you said. Okay. I, do we know what the average class size at Green Acres is in the upper grades, like three, four, five? Average class size? Yeah. Sure. I mean, I, I can tell you um, fifth grade is, is, is our largest right now, um, 24 in one class, 26. A little smaller, 18, 19, and grade three right now, 16, 17, and 16. Okay. And that's ID and contemporary? That's uh, contemporary. 
Um, in the 4 or 5 ID, we have 19 and 20, and 2 3 ID right now is 16 and 17. Yeah, because I can just go back, go back to your question. So on page 8 of the detail, um, it's the full budget, not just by school. I don't know if you have that one. Okay. So if you go down to where it's the 114A, you'll see the... Um, the two in the 2022-23 budget, you'll see the 71440 yeah. and 72100, yeah. and they're by individual. And then you go down a line, you see the 146770. That's taking those two positions from, and it was exactly that. It was exactly three, uh, Clintonville and Green Acres is where they were located, and putting them to all district 16. Okay, thank you. Okay. So yeah, there's no position elimination. It's just a restructuring within the accounting within the budget itself. I was just going to ask if, if we know, like, I know that it's going to vary because as we see increases, they're not equally distributed among the grades. But do we have a rough idea of what the total capacity for Green Acres might be? If we keep adding three kids every couple of weeks, we're going to be in trouble by the end of this year. <laughs> uh, in order to give you a specific answer, I can get that. Yeah, no worries. Definitely. Anybody else? Yeah. Can I ask a small follow-up to Patrick's mm -hmm. response? So you're referring to enrollment trends and things like that, and you have these software that's, that's hopefully going to help you for mm -hmm. In terms of physical space, though, um, are we also looking at that? Okay. Yes. Okay, because that's something that can't happen quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, you can move students around and things like that, but in terms of the physical space, that's something that has to be looked at in a way in advance mm -hmm. to... And Green Acres and Rage is the, are places where we're hitting that physical space yes. maximum. Yes. Not necessarily classroom size, but um, we're running out of rooms to open if need be. Exactly, exactly. Move on to Montuis. Ms. Pernetti is here as well. Questions? Oh, I do have one. <laughs> do we? <laughs> um, when I was working the election at Montuis, the refrigerator didn't close. It did close because the very um, uh, resourceful folks at Montuis were propping it closed with a mm -hmm. cart. So do we have a new fridge all set now there? Two new ones. We do. Okay. Are we talking about the one in the cafeteria? Yeah. Yes. We actually have two. Well, don't tell the rest. But we do. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows now. <laughs> <laughs> and a new warmer. And how are you on chairs? You good on chairs? Well, actually, the chairs that Clinton does received, I think, were in our garage. So we still have another <coughs> chairs. Okay, good. We're glad to take that out of <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing on space since we were talking about space? Um, well, we have an enrollment of 302, um, which is really small considering what the other schools have. So we are very good on space. You're also up five, though, over our last report out. You were at 297 last time, so that's. So we're, we're, we're growing as a district. We have the board. This might be a silly question, but square footage wise, Monoese is fairly large, isn't mm -hmm. it? Like as a school. Mm -hmm. And you have your own exit of um, 91, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I don't see any green acres of green little taxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to find green acres. <laughs> no, they're finding it. Yeah, we like it. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. Mr. McLaughlin is here as well. Okay, we have a question from Concerning Ridge Road. Do you have your current enrollment numbers? So yes, we are at 423. 
and you were 419 as of as of the last report out. So that wow. Yeah. So Greenacres gets a trophy this month. <laughs> we have a friendly battle going back and forth. And um, so you're the oldest building in the district. Congratulations. You get a medal for that. Um, how is the state of Ridge Road right now from like a structural perspective? Uh, structurally, we're, we're, we're very, very good. Um, if there are any problems, um, you know, there's always a very quick response to fixing everything. So we are in a very, very good shape with that. Um, between Howard and Phil and Patrick, and if there's ever a problem, it's reported. And I feel like within minutes, someone's responding and addressing the problem. So um, it's, been, it's been very, very good considering the age of building as well. So. And you're good on chairs? We are great on chairs um, for now, so yeah. And, and not so great on stage, right? No, <laughs> so I would um, kindly echo everything that Christian said. Um, you know, we are able to stay afloat where we are right now, um, but we are, um, you know, if the numbers do continue to grow, um, you know, we are, we would have to have further discussion about um, and big kudos to the staff because uh, we've had to find creative spaces for folks to use, and the staff has been just tremendous in working with that and finding spaces to use. But I think we're hitting our max there. Can you say more about that? Like, can you give me an example of a creative use of space? Sure. So we have, um, especially I'm just thinking at the top of my head, one of our um, speech therapists and one of our occupational therapists kind of joined forces together uh, uh, to share a little office space for days that they were in the building together to service students. Um, there are some um, service staff that are, for example, utilizing places like when the gym is not in use, they are on the backstage of the gym, um, doing some stuff there, kind of work with, with stuff like that. So um, finding space is really good. We've had, um, for example, I'll, I'll throw out our librarian, Mr. Mayo. He had about two offices in his library, and he gave one to one of the math coaches to use and one to our school-based health clinicians uh, to use when they're here um, servicing students. So he's very, very generous in the of that space and letting them use that. So the staff has been just very collegial and supportive of that. And very, very helpful. But you're maxed out. Over there, yeah. So. Nice. But we're, we're, we're afloat, so that's important. Is your average class size similar to Green Acres, contemporary and ID? Yeah, I would say, um, especially like our three, four, our fourth and fifth grade classes, contemporary and ID are averaging anywhere between 20 up to 24. Um, and I believe my kindergartners, uh, first and second, are anywhere from about 18 up to about 20 in that sense. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty Do we, do we, would we ever, and look at portable classrooms as a temporary stopgap. Mm -hmm. So uh, I asked Phil a few weeks ago to start pricing them out just so we knew what they would cost. We do have a portable classroom currently at Ridge that has uh, met its life that we are looking to see what we can do with that one as well because um, there's a lot of band-aids that need to be put on, on that portable classroom to make it go. Where is it? Where, where's the portable classroom? Oh, it's been there for like longer than I've been in district, so it's not so. It looks it's like part of the thing. I had no idea. It's a tiny playground in the back, mm -hmm. not the one all the way down the bottom. There's like a little one more near Crestview. It's back yeah, there. Yeah, right adjacent to the Crestview huh. entrance. We just put a new ramp on there just recently for uh, access to the back door. It's up yet or no, Chris? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Okay. Honestly. We're putting a ramp in. And not that this would take the place of actual classroom space, but I know we at the middle school and high school we have tents for like at the middle school we have tents. middle school. So the elementary schools we do not have tents in case anybody would like to be outdoors. We do not. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, next. We will move on to Mr. Blumenthal and athletics. I'm going to go back to just the original slide uh, for positions and programs. I'm going to highlight really Mr. Blumenthal's 
requests our request for a volleyball team, a unified sports program, both at the middle school and a high school uh, assistant golf coach. So, questions or discussion from the board? I have several. Um, so I was really happy to see the middle school volleyball team up there and the middle school unified sports program because I had asked Patrick for like participation numbers in athletics at the middle school and the high school and at the middle school like the, the for the winter months it looks like we're pretty low and then at, at the springtime it's like one in four kids is participating in some kind of athletic and then at the high school the low is 28 percent and the high is almost 40 percent that's great right so i started thinking like what can we be doing to get more kids involved in the athletic programs get those numbers up especially at the middle school so volleyball or unified sports can you talk about what the timing on those look like from the calendar year perspective and how many kids you think we can bring into the fold sure so unified sports is a full year program where they only meet once a day, um, I'm sorry, once a week, and it's for an hour, and they travel to um, tournaments around the state, or we host tournaments, and we've never had a middle school program. We've had high school for many years, so the middle school program will be modeled after the high school program. Um, so that is a full year program. For the volleyball, it's a fall sport. Um, it would be in the gym at the middle school, and the, part of the reason why the winter sports uh, participation is low is because we only have two teams. We have a girls basketball team and a boys basketball team. Um, we don't have any other space for any other sports. So um, that's part of the reason why the, that number is so low. Um, and, and part of the reason the spring number is higher is because we have over 100 kids in the middle school track and field program, along with softball and baseball. And to be honest, our track and field program at the middle school is in jeopardy because we don't have a coach at this point. Yikes. The, the coach that we've had for the last couple of years is in a uh, educational leadership program is too busy with classes to continue for this spring. So we're looking for a coach. Anybody knows anybody? Um, well, thank you for that. Are there any other winter sports that we might be able to introduce at the middle school level? I know that, like, you said it's a, is it a space issue? It's, it's largely a space issue, but also, I mean, like some of the programs that we have at the high school, I mean, we have ice hockey. We can't do ice hockey at the middle school. We have fencing and rifle. We really can't do those things at the middle school. We have indoor track, which there's no room to do indoor track at the middle school. Um, what else do we have? And Steven, those sports you're referencing, do there are no other middle school programs with those sports. There, that's correct. Okay. That's part of the, we need to find people to compete against. Mm -hmm. want to have, unless you're doing a clinic program, but then again, without gym space, you really can't do a clinic program for something if you don't have the space to do it. So That makes sense. Um, the wrestling team, right? We got 30 kids? We do. The, the register said uh, 30 kids on the wrestling team yes. for year one. That's awesome. It is awesome. Yeah, and the kids seem to be liking it? They do, and they're doing well, and they're enjoying it, so they're learning a lot. And uh, all the surrounding athletic directors, coaches, are astounded that we're able to put together such a program in such a short period of time, and, and we're successful. We're doing very well. Pete Tasperkis was a good hire for that program. I agree. He's a phenomenal I agree. He's guy. He's doing a great job. That's awesome. And then what um, what teams are getting new uniforms this year? Um, for this year, I don't know if I, for this coming year, the 23-24. 23-24 budget, yeah. It's, it's in here. Boys basketball, volleyball, and girls soccer. Again, that's a five-year rotation that we do the um, uniform purchases. And do the student athletes get to pick like uniform type or like how is that handled? So usually we, we work with the coaches um, and we, we, we ask what, what they're looking for, which I would think that they're reaching out to their athletes to find out what their, their interests are. But you know, we're getting quotes from different companies to, to find out the, the best price and the best value. And then we work um, with those companies to, you know, to purchase uniforms. So I, I can't say it's directly from the student athletes, um, but the coaches are providing us with information, sizes, 
um, styles. So. Cool. And then last question for sure. you. Um, last year during budget time, we talked about there was a line item for folks that were collecting the fees for attending um, games, mm -hmm. and I forget the exact number. I think it was like thirty-five to forty-five thousand dollars. <throat> Are we still charging fees to get into our games, and are we continuing that line item this year? So we, we are charging fees to get into games. However, for example, the football program, we couldn't charge this year because we had the games at the turf. Yeah. And we did charge for the CIAC semifinal game because we had to, but for all the other regular season games, we didn't charge. Is there like a regulation that says we're supposed to charge for CIAC final games? Or? They require it. They require In order for us to host that game, we had to figure out a way to do it. Okay. So, um, so it is in the budget to um, charge admission for even lacrosse and soccer and field hockey because the, the intent with the, the package, the bonding package that we got with, for the um, that included the upgrades to the baseball field and softball field included a fence around the turf complex. So we're hoping that once that fence is in place, hopefully by the end of the school year, then we will be charging for soccer games, for field hockey games in the fall, for lacrosse games in the spring. That That is part of the budget, or at least my budget proposal. Great, thanks. So uh, Steve, in terms of the of the uh, ticket prices that is going to be charged, are they typically, what's the typical range? Is it reasonable? And affordable for for SEC the range in SEC we're actually on the low end five dollars for adults three dollars for senior citizens and students whereas there are some school districts that are up to six or seven dollars and they've even added uh, a fee when we charge GoFan online tickets we can choose to incur that cost ourselves which currently is is what um, we're paying for that. If, but we don't sell a lot of tickets online, whereas some districts are actually um, putting that on the the, um, the spectator, on the purchaser. Okay, so if it's a player's family that's coming, is there any discounted tickets or they pay whatever? So if they choose to buy a booster club ticket, like right now the booster club ticket is $25, they get free admission to all games. It's not free, they're paying for a, yes. a booster club card, but then with that purchase, they're getting into all the home games. Um, that booster club card, from what I'm told, is probably going to go up because the boys booster club, the North Haven booster club, has absorbed the girls booster club, which was called the um, the um, Nighthawk booster club. The Nighthawk Nighthawk booster club kind of folded, lack of um, support and participation from parents. So the boys booster club has now kind of taken on that role. They're doing boys and girls. Okay, but there's, so there's no one, one booster club. Okay, but generally there's no issue in terms of uh, affordability of tickets and things like that to attend. It's no issue in regards to what? In terms of how affordable the tickets are. We haven't had issues. Issues, okay. No complaints. Um, I mean, especially from uh, North Haven parents. Sometimes you'll get somebody from another town who says, hey, why are you charging for a baseball game? and we charge for all of our night baseball games. If it was a 3 o'clock game, we don't typically charge for afternoon games. It's usually the evening games, the evening events that we charge for. Okay. In terms of the rugby team, how's that going? How's the team going? So we're currently looking for a coach. Uh, okay. The coach that we had in place, that, that the girls' rugby program had in place for last year, is unable to continue due to um, job opportunities elsewhere. Um, not related to rugby, related to his profession. So we're um, in the process of uh, reviewing candidates. Right now we only have two. One recently withdrew because she got a job somewhere and um, she wasn't able to keep her application active. So we're hoping that by the end of January, early February, we'll have a coach in place. Um, and then it's just a question of the season start. Um, and they're not bound by CIAC restrictions, so they can start really as soon as the coach is in place and is certified um, because it's, it's not like most of our other sports have to wait until March, I think it's 17, 16, and when, that, when CIAC starts the spring season. So, um, so we're just in limbo right now until a coach is, is hired. Okay, but the sport is growing. Well, our numbers aren't great. Okay. So, so last year we I think we had eight on the team, and you can play seventy-seven. Okay. Um, but uh, with a couple of graduates 
from what I understand, we, we might be like scouring the cafeteria, you know, trying to get some interest uh, with the rugby program. So that, that could be an issue. Okay. I, I think it's growing uh, around, you know, the state, but, but our numbers, you know, our, the interest, um, you have to go looking for it. There aren't people coming to my office saying, I, I want to join the girls' rugby program. So okay. hopefully is a little when bit of a concern. Hopefully when a new coach comes in place, you know, uh, he or she can, you know, push And that. there will be some time for that, because we, we hope to have that person in place soon, and then they'll still have at least, you know, six to eight weeks before they really get going. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? I do. Sure. When is volleyball going to start at the middle school? Well, if we, if the budget gets approved and it's, it's active, then it'll be this fall. This fall. So it's a fall sport. It's a fall sport, right? Correct. And there are middle school <laughs> programs within the SEC for volleyball. That's awesome. So we would just be placed into that schedule. Mm -hmm. The schedule gets created for us. Oh, cool. And then, um, so having a full-time athletic trainer is amazing. Thank you for yes, that. Thank um, you. Now that that person is full-time, we've mitigated a lot of risk for liability. Yes. So good job. Yes. Um, and just now that we have somebody full time, are there are there any supplies that that person needs or doesn't have to help? You know, with the safety of the kids, or is that in here? Or? So it, it's it's part of our normal line item. I mean, Bill has reviewed that and he's continuing to review it. But we've we've provided those supplies um, even with a, a part time athletic trainer. So okay. I think we were in good shape in that regard. Okay. Um, but he's he's reviewed the emergency action plan. He's looked at, like, we don't have a AED inside the high school gymnasium. He'd like to put one inside the high school gymnasium. Sure. And I actually have a cabinet that we can do that. Okay. Um, we do have one right outside, but he'd like, just to be safe, he'd yeah. like to have one inside. Mm -hmm. So so he's made a lot of good suggestions. He has his own? He could take with he him? He has his own as okay. well. Great. Because I know CIAC has a few things like they want, you mm -hmm. know, safety-wise, so, and he has all that stuff. He or, does. Okay. He has the tub Great. that we've used uh, in the fall, uh, the cold immersion. Yep. So, so he's, I think he's in good shape. Okay. Perfect. Anyone else? Um, <clears throat> as far as wrestling, okay. you, Amanda talked about it a little bit, but I know okay. it takes a little, it took a decent amount of money to get it up and running, but now that it's up and running and popular and what's what's the needs for like to keep it going on ongoing basis type of thing so, so we because we were a little late on getting things going as far as um, purchasing a wrestling mat we, we bought one that was um, um, gently used from amity so we plan on buying a new one that would be a lightweight seven piece mat with with our colors and with our logo um, that we can, we'll, we're currently practicing at the middle school, we would bring it over to the high school for next year's meets. So that's already in the budget. So I don't think, I didn't put it in the budget for next year, it's in this year's budget. So we are gonna be doing that. Um, we may continue to have to buy some singlets for, for the growing program. Um, Pete actually just purchased about uh, five more because he didn't have enough for the ones that, um, you know, that we did purchase already to be ready. It's a good sign. So it's a good it's a good sign. Yeah. Um, we also don't have an assistant coach. So Pete's been doing things on his own. Um, we do have somebody who um, did initially show interest, but they never fi never uh, finished his application. So um, we're even though the season's like only got about four or five weeks left, we're currently trying to get him certified to at least help out the last you know month or so of the season. Um, so, but that stipend is already in there for next year, so uh, it's not something that you know we need to add in. Okay. So I think we'll, we'll be in good shape for for next year, given what we you guys were already providing us for this year. So, but like I said, it's 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 been a program that's really skyrocketed in both um, participation as well as how well they've done and how how quickly they've learned a new sport. Because only a couple of them were experienced. That's, that's great, and I know a couple people who, whose kids are doing it, and they're loving it, and the kids love it, and it seems like it's a good program. Yeah, so, um, just I just want to make sure I heard what you said. So, girls rugby, we're looking for a head coach. There's a couple. There is an applicant 
right now? Or there's one that has finished their application. There's one that uh, I've reached out to to ask that person to finish it because they, when you go onto Apple Track, they started the application, but they didn't put in a cover letter or a resume. So we're we're asking that they finish that aspect of it. Um, and then we had a third who had to withdraw. Okay. And then we're in need of a middle school track coach for the spring? That is correct. Okay. So, and if, if we don't find that, then we just won't have a track season, I suppose. I, right? I hate to think of that possibility, but um, I don't Steve know. Steve and I are going to we'll, we'll brainstorm some options to see what we can do with that. We don't want to take that opportunity away from That's students. a lot of so kids that it we is. Yeah. 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 That, that was my so. thought, yeah. Okay, and, and then did, sorry to interrupt nope. you. Um, we also placed the middle school uh, track coach position on Indeed to attract more kids. See if we can. You know, it's been up there for some time, so we need to try different avenues. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Can I just say thank you? Really? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, board members, for listening to our presentation the last two nights. Uh, we appreciate the support. And uh, if there's any questions, wrap up. that concludes all of the uh, schools and department uh, discussion and presentation. So if there are any final thoughts. I do have a couple more questions about our prior uh, budget workshop, okay. specifically as they relate to capital. So that's OK? Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, all right, let's go, please. So I know we took we took off the chairs from the high priority capital list at Clintonville. That still leaves us with $190,000 of high priority capital projects. It should be about 175. 175. Because it was 195 with the chairs, it's 175 because they were 20,000 without the chairs. I thought they were 5,000. Sure. No, there was a line. Oh no, you're right. 25. And, and I actually, no, it's right. mis I think it's misaligned. I outlined in there for chairs for 5,000, but that's actually the business school chairs. Okay. So that's sorry. Oh, nope. That's 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 even better. Um, so these $175,000 worth of high priority items are not in the budget correct at all right now correct. and we are slated we would typically pay for items like this out of our capital reserve fund correct this year we're tracking to end our capital reserve fund with seven thousand dollars so what are like is there an option to add additional money to our operating budget in order to cover these capital items so it's a, yeah, that's a, uh, an option for the board to discuss. And that would be one hundred and seventy-five thousand, give, give or take. Yeah, if we went with every option for those high, quote unquote, high prices. Yeah. yeah. So, um, sorry, go ahead. Oh, please go ahead. I thought you. <laughs> so I had a little time at lunch today. And I was looking through the meeting minutes of other districts within our district reference group to kind of see what types of proportionate increases they're asking for on top of their annual budgets. And it looks like Berlin, that's in our district reference group, is asking for 4.87%. East Lyme is asking for 6.97%. Ledyard, that really doesn't usually ask for a lot more money, is asking for just under 4%. And Shelton is asking for 6.68%. Um, so not everybody has meeting minutes available just yet. This is like, you know, very early, and it's not guaranteed that those districts are going to get that, but we're coming in at a 2.87% requested increase. The average within our DERG as of today is a 5.35% increase, based on my math. And that's without us included in there, because our 2.87 brings that average down a little bit to like 5.1%. Um, and I was looking at this, and I just want to poke at one other quick thing, which is the hospital insurance, Howard. So we're looking at a 1.78% projected increase. And when I was digging into the meeting minutes for the other districts in our DERG, they're looking at like a 10% increase for the hospital insurance line item. It doesn't look like they're self-funded in the way that we are. So I just want to make sure that that 1.78% is, is good to go. I think our insurance reserves, are, we're at 125% of so the... So correct. We're actually yeah. over 100. We're actually at 125% of the midpoint, yep. which actually ends up being $554,000 based on my last report that I sent out to the board. Um, so our reserves are ex exceeding that midpoint. We're actually over the, we're actually over the maximum value, which is... Okay. I, it, I don't know, I can do the calculation on that, but we're even over that value. So theoretically, we have $550,000 
to utilize, and we've utilized that to bring the budget in at the 2.87%. So the 1.8, though, that's a, that's a, it, it's not, it's a, not, a, it's not the actual increase. The actual increase would have been about they wanted an additional four hundred five hundred thousand dollars in okay. the budget, and that makes we sense. utilize that to bring we because we have the excess reserves. You should really never go over your hundred percent. If you're over your hundred percent number, that that top level, the max, you really shouldn't have that. You should also you should bring it down to the midpoint. And so the way to do that is to lower our budget over here and right. utilize those funds to do something else as we're doing with this. So let me just restate this and just make sure I'm I'm good here. But like having reserves available for uh, hospital insurance previously has allowed us to come in with a lower potential increase in the overall budget this year. Correct. Because we've saved for a rainy day. Correct. Good financial planning has allowed you to be able to come in with a lower budget this year. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so those are my questions. All right, I would just like to, to mention quickly that, you know, <coughs> I'd like to take a vote on possible uh, approving of this budget. But before we do that, I just want to remind everybody, this is your opportunity to ask a question if you have one. So if you have any last-minute questions or something that has come up as, as you're processing all this information, now, now would be the time. So I have a question. This may not really be directly on the budget, but uh, just going by what uh, Amanda said, in terms of the high-priority items, is there anything that's related to safety? And related to safety. Because that would concern me if it's a high priority so. safety issue that's not part of the budget, but is up for consideration. So n nothing that is of immediate concern. Okay. Um, replacing floors on the ramps at Clintonville, mm -hmm. those can be a safety issue if they're not continually like, um, re-adhered down. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that, that's why we want to replace that. And the high school, the replacing the, the trees with poles on the road course, that eliminates you know, the living factor of trees, and we can put telephone poles there. We don't, there's no, um, you know, the, the, those stay there. There's no um, having to test the trees and make sure that they can support uh, the system that's there. But there's nothing imminent. Nothing imminent. Nothing imminent. No. Okay. No. All right. Sidewalk. Issue. Yeah. The sidewalk. The sidewalk. Yeah. So the sidewalk is not a safety issue. It's just an issue that needs to be fixed. It is. Yeah. It, it is in, in disrepair at this point in the front, so if, it could be a tripping hazard, sure, but it's not um, something that's imminently impacting. Um, it's off to the side. It's not where students uh, pass for dismissal or, or arrival. Christian, I'm correct in that, right? Okay. Just want to verify. Okay. All right, thanks. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, an AED for one of the programs. Um, are they looking at a permanent AED for the in, in the high school in more than one location? So for the gym, they need a, we currently an have AED one, inside the gym. Um, right outside the gym in the main lobby, okay. but um, the athletic trainer has recommended that we put one inside the gymnasium, um, which we do have a cabinet for, and we would just have to purchase an AED, which is not in the budget. Okay. Do you have AEDs on the fields when you're field? We do um, from the athletic trainer. He carries one at all times. But we're also in the process of putting new um, cabinets out at uh, both the athletic complex and the between the turf field and Vanicore field. We'll probably go right on the middle school um, wall. And Marie, the reason there was a, a time we've asked for this eight, nine months ago, we couldn't get the boxes we needed um, because it's the type of box that when you place it outside, um, it, as soon as you open it, it calls 911 and take a picture of the person there so there, there's no vandalism or anything like that. And, and if you do need it, it's fully accessible and you don't have to worry about calling 911. It immediately does that. So we just received, I think it was last Friday, Steve, I sent Steve the picture of the boxes um, and we're going to have to uh, get a cell phone plan or you know, extension to make sure that we can reach the needed people and we'll get them up on each of the places ASAP. They also had to be environmental, right? Cooled and heated. Because oh, right. they had to be outside. Right. Right. They, they protect protects the, so yeah. protects the, the entry. The, so they, they, they were very kind of complex boxes. So that's why it took a little while to get them. I used a few. Yeah, okay. I did. And in, in terms of training, is it only the athletic trainer that's trained <coughs> on how to use it? Or All of our coaches are certified in CPR, first aid, and AED. So in, in order to be a coach, you have to have that training. 
Mm. Okay, so outside the athletic staff, though, among within the school itself. School nurse. It's school nurse. Okay. okay. And Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. Those of the teachers that are certified in CPR and first aid also have that training too. They usually complement. The coaches that, that. Are not teachers. No, yeah, no, just teachers that happen to be certified outside of school. Is that a is the AED training complement that too? If they're trained in first aid and CPR, would they have that training as well? Usually CPR will go. AED goes with CPR. Okay. Yes. All right. First aid, not always, but CPR, AED okay. usually goes. So they go together. Yeah. But I would add that the ones outside the, the middle school that are going to be accessible to the, the community, I mean, anybody could use those mm -hmm. or will have to use those if there's an emergency. And AEDs have been designed to be really anyone could use them. Yeah. You just have to follow the directions, which is which is great. But our coaches have to be certified. And they're for those adult directions are verbal, correct? Yes, they're verbal. Yeah. They're verbal. Yeah. And they're there's for pediatrics the and for adults. Sorry, Brent. No, there's pictures on the box, too. Right. <coughs> Powered on, it starts to mm -hmm. uh, Has, has CPR been offered to teachers in general? Um, in November, professional development, we held a stop to bleed and CPR training for the entire certified staff. And we'll repeat that every time it lapses. Make sure we're up to date. Yeah. The recertification is an issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, can I say, the, there are like some grant programs and some companies that will help schools get AEDs, and I'm sure Bill can help you with those, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I have a quick question, just sure. uh, listening to Amanda, and maybe I misheard, but are, are you recommending another line be put on our budget where we would have dollars to pay per capital projects and not rely on reserve money to do so? Yeah. <laughs> and uh. if so, would we need to discuss and vote on that before we make a final vote for the budget? You would if we wanted to add anything to this budget because it's not a direct line item as we, as we stand. Um, it's, it hasn't been a line item prior, and we've always found uh, the money to fix what needed to be fixed. And we had quite a few uh, things pop up last year that were unexpected that cost us hundreds of thousands that we uh, were able to accomplish anyways without that line item. Uh, the problem being that, you know, if we're able to find that money now to add another line, you may be adding several percentage points to your budget increase that you know may or may not be needed. Are you saying add so, it right now or add it in yeah. the future? No, I'm saying add it now because I looked at the high priority budget items and if you take out the chairs and if you take out the clear touch TVs, no offense to the clear touch TVs, but I don't know if I can like really make a case for those, then we're at 3.08% increase over last year. So we go from 2.87 to 3.08, based on my math, sorry, Howard. No, it's um, but like, I, I think it's reasonable because in at least as long as I've been here, we've had, you know, over $100,000 in capital reserves to kind of look at and play with in case the sidewalk does break or in case we do have some kind of a capital emergency. And in the past, we've also, had like a working agreement with Mr. Frieda and the folks on the Board of Finance saying that if it's under 2%, we could put it in a capital fund and that would be used, it would be earmarked for educational dollars. Right, which are the unencumbered funds. Correct. Which, which are, is from the existing budget. With, which our memorandum of, of agreement mm -hmm. would kind of change a little bit how that process is done. So I think having it as a line item gives us the ability to make sure that we have those funds available in case there's something that needs to happen and we don't have the risk of maybe not being approved to roll over any excess funds. Well, to, to your point, we had just about 100000 and we had an unexpected yep. 70000 roughly, yep. uh, hit. The inner so program. we were where you wanted to be. Yep. Uh, and it just happened that this uh, situation arose and we had to take care of it, which put us in the spot we're at now. I think with the um, unencumbered funds that we've had over the years 
and we've never had an issue covering anything that we, um, I don't think we need to add that line item right now. Um, I think maybe we can look at it for next year's budget. One thing I don't want to do is to take a look and say, hey, all these other towns are asking for four, five, and six, and we're only asking for 2.87. You know, I am under the impression that, you know, we can only answer for ourselves, and I'm not here to really compare ourselves to other people's budget because I don't know how they created it, what they've been lacking in the past, or, or how they're looking at their futures. Uh, the only thing I can say is that at 2.87, we have everything that we need covered. We have the ability to cover um, some unexpected capital projects right now. And I think we should wait. And if we want to add that, we can add it on to, we can talk about adding it out to next year's budget. And I think at that point too, that MOU will be 100% instead of questionable as it stands. That's my, that's my opinion. Have we ever been in a situation where there was like a safety issue or something that needed to get replaced ASAP, you know, that would be on this sheet and we haven't been able to do that? Within my time here, no. Is there, um, <clears throat> is there approval besides the board here, an approval process if we wanted to add that line to next year's budget? Is this something that would have to go through the Board of Finance? because it's brand new? Uh, you know, I, I don't think so. I don't believe, I, I no, don't believe it's so. It, it's, you have jurisdiction over this budget Correct. than the next year's budget, which because this is technically next year's budget. So sure. we're talking, I think you're yeah, talking yeah, two years. Yeah, after. So, yes, yeah. the year after this. The year after so this. we can add, we can request to add any line that we want for our budget. So whether it's just capital or if we want to create a different line or another need arises, God forbid we have another pandemic and there's an issue that we want to make a line item for. <laughs> God forbid we can we can add that at that time. So that's not anything we need approval for. Marie, tonight is a, a presentation of the superintendent's budget proposal, and upon uh, the vote and approval today, it becomes the board of education's budget. So that's the name change of it when it moves forward to the town. So. Okay, thank you. So. While I agree with you in principle, <laughs> I, I don't think at this point in time adding another line item and increasing the budget is a good idea. I do, I have no objection to having more of a discussion about doing this and adding this line item to future budgets, but this year, current economic state of everything, inflation, we have lots of different problems that are not central to North Haven, and I think North Haven's been run very well, and I think as Howard just said, the, this board's planning has kept our budget in check. So I think from a town and from a school board, we're running very well, and we're running kind of hand in hand with fiscal responsibility. I just don't know if now is the right time to go and put another line item here that increases the budget. I think that's a fair point, Joe. Like, I, I, you're, you're spot on. There, there are other economic factors that are at play. But when I see things like, like ramp flooring, yeah. I'm wondering, like, how old is that? And, like, do we have another year in there? And if we don't have another year in there to be able to replace it, what could potentially be coming out of another line item to make up for that $22,000? So that's what I want to just, like, understand, like, would we be cutting paras, sports, like I'm, I'm just not sure, like. So all those things impact students and those are at the bottom of the list that in my time here we've never come close to touching because the board has been, in the town has been nothing but generous in how they've supported us. So um, we will work very diligently to make sure those are never touched because we don't impact students in our, any of our decisions. But it sounds to uh, Joe's point, yeah. <clears throat> We're not sure where economics are going to be playing in the town over the next couple of years, and I like the option of, if not this year, discussing it for next year after seeing this year's progress and what we used monies for, because I am worried about protecting a line for items that we need that is very uh, variable depending on what happens during that year. Yeah, I think that's you know, a great idea moving forward. I think that, that's fine. We can definitely talk about that. And um, you know, my guess is after that discussion, we could probably have that added. 
uh, into the next budget session. And this is the first year that I presented a capital proposal with that priority list and really narrowed it down that I've, so other, in past years it's just been a plan where it's never, it's never been funded. It's always been, a, maybe we'll have funds at the end of the year to utilize, but with the age of the buildings and whatnot, we just wanted to make sure that we had a nice list for the board so they knew exactly if the board decided to go in this direction, what was needed, and we had to pin this right down. So whether we, it's just for you know, it was knowledge really, I of found the board. It very I agree. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you did this, and we will continue. How comfortable would you be with us approving this budget without the high priority capital items? <laughs> I, I, if I was uncomfortable, I would have included it in there. Okay, that's helpful. Anybody else? Let me get my glasses on. Okay, my, may I have a motion to approve the superintendent's budget recommendation of $61,593,954? Well, I think I'm going to Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I think I need a microscope. That's at 62 million. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a double check. Sure. Say it again. Say it again. Yeah. If I say it again, I might say 60. How's that? <laughs> Uh, for the 2023-24 school year. So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Peterson is not here. Okay. <coughs> that passes. And um, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you everyone for attending and being open and honest. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the Town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at NHTV.com.